Wait a minute, Chicago? Who do you know at Colson College in Chicago? Nobody, but Mom said they called the house and made this incredible offer. Athletic director. Well, congratulations. Thanks. I can't figure out how they heard about me, though. Who cares? It's a great opportunity. Are you going to take it? Okay, he must be out for those deaths. Come back here. Why come here? Get in here. I can't work in these kind of conditions. What are you trying to do to me? What's that? This would be my checkbook. You couldn't pay me enough. I thought we were friends. We are. But there's some... Just be quiet. Let's get to work. We don't have a lot of time. Time for what? You understand, of course, my position is difficult at best. You want to sue Scott Baldwin and win. What's difficult? Well, one branch of the family finding fault with another branch. And, of course, there are the feelings of the child to consider. In any custody dispute, the welfare of the child is going to be the court's only concern. Serena is my grandniece. Just how difficult is it going to be to gain custody from her natural father? Not easy. But you are a blood relative, and you have ample means to support the child. If we had some compelling evidence of abuse or neglect on the part of the father, does such a thing exist? Hi, Scott. Hello, Eve. I'll make this quick. I need a favor from you. Another one. Oh, I hope you're keeping track of these. What's up? You know something about me that no one else knows. And I need to make sure that it stays between you and me. Can I count on you? about you is pretty sketchy already. Well, you know that I had a date with an old flame and uh, it went badly and you figured out who it was. Bennett Devlin. Don't worry, I won't tell anybody. Thank you. Though I would like to punch him in the nose every time <laughs> I see him. Oh, I've never seen anyone talk to Ben the way you did that night. Who the hell does he think he is anyways, huh? It took me a long time to figure out the kind of man I was dealing with. You had him pegged in two minutes flat. That's because I'm such a good judge of character. Lucky me. The burden of proof is on the plaintiff. It's up to us to prove that Scott Baldwin is a bad father. There may be no case at all unless we have evidence to support that claim. Oh, I don't think we'll have to dig too deep. Are you pursuing this case on behalf of the mother? Unfortunately, she's dead. So my grandniece has only her father to rely on. And you think that's not enough? Baldwin, I'm afraid, never recovered from his wife's death. He never had what you would call a very savory character, even when she was still alive. I don't think we'll have much trouble finding people in this town to attest to that. For example? Baldwin used a child before as a means to financial gain. Can you prove that? No problem. Excuse me. A babysitter of one of his other victims. He just wanted custody of Jason so that he could get his hands on that child's trust fund money. After Susan was murdered, 
He forged power of attorney papers. He embezzled money out of that sweet little boy. She is willing to testify. The Jason mentioned on the tape is Jason Quartermain, the son of Alan Quartermain. Do you believe that you can convince a court that you're a more suitable legal guardian for the child? Actually, I'd prefer the court to grant custody to the child's biological mother. I thought you said Serena's mother's dead. Dominique died, yes, of cancer. But even before she died, Baldwin was already starting to set the stage, if you will, by making such statements as, oh, who will I have once you're gone? Why couldn't we have ever had a family? So forth and so on. He wanted a child. And so did Dominique. She did love him, after all. But she was dying. She could never carry a child to term. The possibility of her cancer cells contaminating any surrogate mother was just a risk she was not willing to take. So she needed to find a healthy, willing donor with a match that was close enough to convince her husband that she had finally given him the child he was demanding. No one knew at the time, but Dominique had a half-sister. Her name is Danielle Ashley. Dominique found Danielle and convinced her to donate an egg. Fascinating. Yes, it is. And since that time, Danielle has come to know her daughter, and she's very concerned. At the time, she agreed to help her half-sister. Uh, she obviously didn't uh, consider the consequences, nor did she realize that Baldwin was only after a Stanton child to strengthen his hold on the Stanton money. But Dominique had a lot of money? Her estate was worth well over $100 million when she died. That's a lot of money. Yes, it is. Too much not to tempt a man of Baldwin's character. Danielle told him and the surrogate mother the truth. But they treated her brutally. But I have conclusive proof that Danielle Ashley is the biological mother of Serena Baldwin. And I want you to do whatever it takes. I will make sure you have whatever means you need. For the child's sake, of course. Oh, uh... Doc, what are you doing here? Collins, Kevin, subdural hematoma. That's me. I know. I mean, I, of course, I know that. I, it's just, uh, Tess. Tess, I hate Tess. You know, I always got sweaty palms and got nauseated in high school. With you're you're supposed to be out on on testing. Tess, you're supposed to be out all morning taking tests. Lucy, aren't you going to introduce us? No. O of course I am. What am I saying, silly me? Um. Tina Chow. This is my doc, uh, Kevin Collins. Uh, Tina is a business associate of mine. What kind of business? Banking. Uh, Tina is a brilliant business banking associate of mine. Why don't I go get something to eat oh, somewhere? Yeah, right, but you know, Tina, we have a lot to discuss, so don't go far. You know, a lot of brilliant business banking decisions need to be made. Right. right. Wait a minute. Wasn't Tina the one who helped you renovate the lighthouse? And she's gone into banking? She is such a versatile lady, isn't she? You know, you gotta go. I, I'm gonna go and actually find the person who needs to take you to take all those tests. So you do good on your tests, and I'll be back. <laughs> Bye. 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 Go. Oh, Dr. Devlin, hi. Uh, I, I have to thank you. He, he's doing so wonderfully. Kevin is, is just remarkable. He's walking. He, he's eating. He is making a remarkable uh, Well, that is just so wonderful. Oh, uh, listen, by the way, since you're here, there's something uh, I needed an answer to, and I thought I would ask you. I, I mean, I don't know if you can give me an answer, but since you're the surgeon and all, I thought you probably could. I, I mean, I'm probably not going to have to go to anybody else for a second opinion. On what? On, uh, well, you see, Doc, uh, that's Kevin, that's my little nickname for him. We were going to go away on sort of a, a romantic getaway to celebrate the fact that he survived that horrible fire. But thanks to you, he survived it. And, uh, well, you see, the point I'm trying to make, there is no point. Um, what I was wondering is, you see, I was wondering when we could resume, well, technically we're not married, so uh, I would, when could we resume almost marital relations? You mean sex? Yeah. 
Uh, but not now. I mean, I, I don't mean right this minute. I, ju I just mean when... You see, I had this friend, Audrey Hardy, and she went through the same thing that Doc went through. Well, and it took her a long darn time to heal. Well, I'm familiar with Mrs. Hardy's case. Uh, and her injury was more severe. The circumstances were quite different. Dr. Collins had the benefit of an OR, and... Uh, just be gentle. Oh, thank you. That is so wonderful. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> That's great. Oh, oh, a a excuse me, but thank you. Yeah, uh, Ta. A wire service must have picked up your story. Must have been a real slow news day. It's because you're a hero, Frank. You thought of other people's welfare before your own. It doesn't happen that often. You don't have to be a hero to be an athletic director. You're a leader. People want someone like that on their team, leading their team. You deserve a chance like this. You'll do a great job. Are you trying to get rid of me? Frank, that's silly. That's... Why would I want to do that? Why would I want to leave? To do something for yourself for once. And you'd let me go? I couldn't lay some guilt trip on you to make you stay. Julie, the job sounds great, but it's not my dream. And playing football in Notre Dame was just a way to pay for school. I wouldn't have minded playing pro for a couple of years, but I wanted to be a doctor. When my chance went by, I helped Joe get his shot. Now look at him. I like my life here. I like it better all the time. You're turning down the job? I guess you're stuck with me. No, no, not there. Forget it. Just leave it. Tina. Tina, 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 what are you doing? Come on, we don't have all day. This is crazy. It's hopeless. No, don't use that word. I don't believe in using that word. I don't even know the meaning of that word. Listen, Kevin's going to be here any minute because he's finished with those tests. And Grace is going to occupy him as long as she can, but he'll be here any second. Lucy, people have asked me to decorate dog houses, barns. But I am not a miracle worker. Yes, yes, today. Think of yourself as a miracle worker. You can work magic. Magic? Yeah. Tina, listen to the room. It's calling you. Tina, Tina, make me beautiful. Fix me up. Do it for Lucy. Do it for Kevin. Do it for your portfolio. Do it for the money. The muse has spoken. Oh, go, girl. Come here, guys. I know what we're going to do. Oh, I love watching miracles happen. <laughs> I know I promised not to try returning any favors, but if you ever need anything down the line. Well, now that you mention it. I knew it. You want me to wash your truck, right? No. Two things. First thing, I've had as many meaningful conversations that I want to have. So promise me, this will be the last one. I'll try. Favor number two. Make sure you get the chrome. <laughs> no, I got something else. In your dreams. I need you to mail this letter for me. It's for Serena's school. If I uh, don't get it done, uh, she won't you'll, be able to take this trip. You'll never hear the end of it, right. I know. Consider it done. And these. And thank you. I was thinking maybe we should take one more, one more walk back to the nurse's station. No. Okay? Ye God's well, grace, you're wearing me now. I mean, uh, you know. How many times have we taken that walk? Why don't you do it with a hole in your head? Give such a hard time. Huh. Well, enjoy your stay. Lucy? I'm in here, Doc. Just follow the rose petals. <laughs> oh, my. I'd say you've really outdone yourself this time. <laughs> well, 
Well, you know, we were planning that romantic getaway to the plaza, and since we couldn't go to the plaza, I figured, why not bring the plaza to you? Would you get in here while the water's still warm? It's locked. What? It can't, it can't be locked. I didn't lock the door. Well, then it must be stuck. Oh, poo! I, I wanted you to discover me. You should see me all covered in bubbles and nothing else. Well, I can still discover that. Just come open the door. Oh, okay. But you have to promise first. Promise me you will not open that door until I get back in. Otherwise, it'll ruin the entire effect. All right, all right. I promise. All right. Lucy? <gasps> What's wrong? You're stuck. Uh, yeah, see, I, I was I was just trying to, you know, be sure the temperature was okay and pushing that little shower thing to make sure it didn't hit us in the head. And then, okay, I admit it, my toe got stuck in the faucet. Lucy, Lucy, don't say anything more. My head hurts when I laugh. Well, then don't laugh. Just get me out of here, please. You've always put other people first, especially your family, even if it meant putting your own life on hold. I don't want to be one of those obstacles. First of all, my family has never been an obstacle to anything in my life, and neither are you. Now, this job is an obstacle if I can't have you with me. Wow. Hey, so uh, what's new on the home front? Frank was just offered a wonderful position as athletic director at Colson College in Chicago. Uh, when do you start? Actually, I'm not going to take it. I've got too much going for me right here in Port Charles. Well, I say good for us. Julie and I would hate to lose our favorite slumlord. Watch yourself, Eve. I'm sure there was a compliment in there somewhere. You have time for coffee? Always. You just don't give up, do you? First, Frank's story gets newspaper coverage because you have a friend at the Chicago American. And I'll just bet that you arranged for that job offer by pulling some strings with another one of your cronies. You're so quick to think badly of me. I wonder why. I think we both know why. I'm not blaming you. We had a deal. Leave Frank and Julie alone. Didn't you hear me say I was leaving Port Charles? You don't have to be in the room to cause damage, Ben. I profoundly regret that I've made you able to say that with such conviction. So, what do you think? Do we have a case? I'll study my notes, and I'll get back to you. You don't sound very convinced, Byron. Uh, may I call you Byron? Custody cases are difficult. Scott Baldwin is a lawyer. A good one. This case is worth $100 million, and that translates into a hefty fee. Remember that. I mean, can you imagine? All that money in the hands of someone like Scott Baldwin, a man who convinced his dying wife to give him a child so that he could steal their money, a drug user... Drugs. I'm sorry, I didn't mean for that to come out. I uh, wanted to wait till I had absolute proof. Uh, information is power, Mr. Stanton, and I'm going to need it if I'm going to win this case. How can I best put this? Um, Scott Baldwin is no stranger to recreational drugs. Are you sure? He's managed to keep it hidden, but it's only a matter of time before it's found out. Mr. Stanton, I think you have an extremely winnable case here. And Mr. Rollins, I think you're about to make partner.
What are you doing here? Tonight, Sabrina is the matchmaker for her new teacher, Martin Mull. It's an all-new Sabrina the Teenage Witch. And there's a new boy in town. It's Matthew Lawrence. Watch his welcoming party on the season premiere of Boy Meets World. Then, careful what you wish for. It's an all-new You Wish and an all-new Teen Angel on the new TGIF, ABC Tonight. Will Adam's cover-up cost him his future with Liza? Watch what happens on All My Children today.